Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you a 2014 French drama film called, Far From Men. Spoilers ahead. Sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins at school in Algerie, where Daru is a teacher for young students that teaches history and how to read and write. As he dismisses the class, the students go to the front yard to play tag and football before going home. The next day, Daru teaches his students about the map and how to locate some states. But he glances out the window and notices his friends that visit to warn him. They tell him that air have been 20 attacks from the enemy for the past few days as they execute anyone with no prisoner. One of them asks Daru to finish giving the rice ration to the students and return to Tingwood immediately, where the war is very far and will provide safety for them. Several days after gathering some supplies, Balducci arrives in front of the school with a prisoner tied up in a rope. Daru welcomes them by cooking snacks and tea. Balducci informs Daru that he will be returning to El Amor after he leaves the prisoner in his hands to transport him to Tingwood. Daru declines as he does not want to partake in military affairs. Daru adds that being a teacher gives him more responsibilities to attend to, but Balducci reminds him that the authorities will take down the school if Daru declines. But after some further discussion, he agrees to shelter the man after Balducci returns to El Amor. Daru unties the man and offers him proper food and a bed to rest for the night. Daru's actions confuse the man as he expects to treat him badly, but instead, he takes care of him. Later that night, the man groans due to feeling uneasy, and Daru provides medication and takes care of him to ease his feeling. The man thanks him for being nice to him, and then Daru implies that he will not take him to the authorities and will free him after a day of his recovery. Morning arrives while Daru steps outside as he hears horses and their footsteps from a distance which alarms him. He instantly locks the doors and windows at the school. He also grabs his rifle and pistol to protect themselves from the authorities. The authorities arrive on their horses, where they start throwing rocks and shooting at the windows to scare Daru and the prisoner. They want to take the prisoner to Tingwit, but Daru disagrees as he wants to free the man. Daru retaliates with gunshots, killing a man and then shooting his horse, thus scaring the other authorities to leave them alone for some time. Daru and the prisoner peek at the window, checking whether the authorities are already gone. Daru notices that the horse cannot stand anymore although it is still alive. He goes outside and ends its suffering by shooting it in the head, as it's now incapable of walking nor standing on its own. Daru's frustration grows as he realizes that his school has some broken windows and doors. He furiously grabs the man out of the school and pushes him away. He shouts and tells him to leave and follow the trail south away from Tingwit to escape alone. But as the man leaves, Daru feels mercy and tells him to wait, and he offers to escort him to travel south from the school. He prepares some supplies that will suffice for several days of travel, and before they leave, he writes on the blackboard to inform the students that there will be no classes for now. Another set of authorities arrives that wants to take the prisoner just before they leave, but Daru scares them off and points his pistol at their leader while explaining that he will take him to Tingwit. The authorities threaten him that they will be back to take the prisoner and then leaves the school. Daru and the prisoner follow the path south, but after some time, Daru hears the incoming enemies riding their horses from behind them. They quickly run towards the mountain and hide behind a large set of rocks and wait for some time till the area is clear again. They continue to travel following the mountain path to avoid alerting the authorities, but they keep slipping at the rocks on the mountain path, endangering their life at some point. After traversing the mountain path, they decide to rest beside a large rock that provides shade. While they are eating and drinking, a man patrolling while riding a horse suddenly appears in front of them. The man points his rifle toward Daru, but he loses control of the horse, and it hits his rifle, and Daru panically shoots him in the chest. Daru shouts and regrets shooting the man. He blames the prisoner while calling him weak, with no courage or honor. He then orders the prisoner to scavenge his rifle and the bullets for their safety. But the prisoner gives the dead body prayer and covers its face with his hijab before completely covering him with dirt as a grave. He disagrees with Daru's previous statements and leaves first after offering the prayer to the dead man. But as they traverse the south path, a sandstorm occurs. They do not have the leverage to stop walking as the authorities may catch up to them. While walking, they notice abandoned ruins but disregard them as they don't see any reason to rest yet. And after some time, the rain slowly pours down and gets more robust with each drop. They immediately survey the area for a place to stay. They notice a lone house from afar, and they run towards it but the rain is still pouring inside, they look up, and the prisoner laughs as no roof is covering the house. Both decide to return to the ruins to stay until the rain stops. Soon after, they arrive at the ruins and open a house. It is completely dark, and Daru opens his lighter to illuminate the dark place. 
The prisoner then grabs some dried leaves from the roof to help light up the fireplace. The prisoner shares that he is the oldest sibling in the family, and Daru figures out that his name is Muhammad due to being the oldest. Muhammad explains that he did kill his cousin to save his family from paying the blood money, and if he dies, vengeance will consume his siblings, and he may commit murder as well, and his only way of salvation is to get the French to slay him at Tingwit. Daru then shares his food and milk with Muhammad in sympathy as he recognizes his bravery in sacrificing himself to save his family. Before the rest, Muhammad insists on going to Tingwit to make his plan successful, and after that conversation, they both fall asleep. The following day, Muhammad gathers something to eat nearby before Daru wakes up. They eat a baruga, a root crop that has a similar texture to the bread. But as they leave, a group of rebels arrive and capture them. The rebels tie them up to their horses and bring them to their nearby camp, thinking that they can use them as hostages. And as they arrive at the camp, Daru recognizes one of his former squad mates at the 3rd Regiment, Sliman. He calls him to ask for help explaining that he is not a terrorist but rather an ally on their side. Sliman calls him Major and unties Daru and Muhammad after catching up with each other. But threatens them to not escape as he will tie them up or shoot them if they try. The camp packs up and leaves alongside Daru and Muhammad. Sliman catches up to Daru and asks about what he's doing for the past few years. Daru tells him that he is a teacher who teaches children how to read and write and gives them rice rations to help them survive poverty. Sliman hopes that other people learn from him and do charitable work to help those in need. After some time of traveling with the camp, they arrive at a cave where the rebels build a temporary base in there for the meantime. Sliman asks Daru about being a teacher after the war, but Major interrupts them with another familiar face that Daru recognizes. He leaves as another rebel calls him after having a small talk with Daru. Sliman shares that most of their squad from before is now part of the rebellion after the war. He tells Daru that he is part of the opposition and needs to choose a side as soon as possible, or they will consider him an enemy and execute him if necessary. Meanwhile, Daru and Muhammad are lying down together. Muhammad tells Daru that he has never experienced a woman's touch or how to love someone not part of his family, and Daru jokes as he can't help him in that aspect. Muhammad asks Daru if he's married, and he responds with a yes, but that was long before at Algiers on a windy day at the large church, where he married his wife, that passed away 10 years ago. The following day arrives, and the camp is now ready to leave the cave to relocate, but some soldiers shoot at the rebels as they reach a specific area outside the cave. After shooting at the enemy, the rebels utilize the large rocks to hide their location. But one soldier threatens the enemy to hit the hostages if they continue shooting at them. The enemy forces shout that they want to know if hostages are still alive and if they can see them. Sliman orders Daru to show up in front to show that they have hostages and to stop the firing. The enemy tells the rebels to come out one by one, but the rebels disagree and tell them to back off instead while they go out one by one. The enemy forces grow impatient and as soon as a rebel is in sight of the rifle, they shoot him immediately in the head. They start to throw smoke bombs to make the remaining rebels come outside the cave and ambush them from the inside. As the smoke scatters, Muhammad finds with the crowd of retreating rebels, but thankfully they are both unhurt, and they join the rebels to escape at the back entrance of the cave. As the rebels escape, the enemy forces shoot them from behind, leaving Sliman and two of his troops alongside Daru and Muhammad. The two soldiers decide to surrender to the enemy and step out of the rock they are hiding from, and as they step forward, the enemy shoots them till they cannot move anymore. Daru looks Sliman in the eyes and decides to call out the enemies to save him by shouting that he's the hostage, saving both Sliman and Muhammad. The soldiers frisk them to check for their belongings and ensure they are hostages. But Daru is doing this to buy some time for Sliman to escape. After the soldiers are done collecting, cleaning up the corpse, and peeling them up in a line, Lt. Latalek tells Daru that they are free to go or can wait for them to finish cleaning up the rebels at the other side of the area. But Daru has further plans to help Muhammad and wants to go the other way towards the south to free him away from his cousins and the blood money debt. Daru tells the lieutenant that he shows no mercy to the enemy even after surrendering. Lieutenant responds that they are only following orders and their job is to eliminate the rebels at the plateau and leave no hostages from the enemies. A soldier hands Daru his belongings, and after checking all their items, he tells Muhammad to walk with him south near the Tingwit. He tells the soldiers that they shouldn't shoot surrendering troops and instead shows mercy. Before they leave, Daru points at the corpse and yells at Muhammad that it is better to live and try to survive as much as possible rather than die like the corpse in front of them. After hours of walking, Daru and Muhammad reach Burzina, where he was born and share his childhood experience with his family. Before the French considers them Arabs, and now the Arabs consider them French, but in reality, they are Spanish from Andalusia. They go to the town to get some rest and replenish their energy. 
As Daru enters the bar of Senorita Martinez, he realizes that he can provide a solution to Muhammad's lack of experience with women. He offers his last money and rifle for a place to stay, alcohol to drink and give Muhammad a woman to spend some time alone. Senorita Martinez also provides Daru with a woman as an addition for selling his rifle at their bar. Eventually, Daru and Muhammad leave the town of Berzina to continue traveling towards another path near Tinguit. Muhammad gives an Arabian coin with the number 8 to give Daru luck. He keeps on asking Daru if they are near Tinguit as he wants to make his plan work and save his family from the blood money. And as they reach the end of their journey, they face two paths that connect Tinguit and a desert pass towards the nomads that will accept Muhammad even with a crime of murder, as they see no impurities to any people beyond their town. Daru allows him to decide whether to save his family and sacrifice himself or save his family while living his own life with the nomads. The movie ends with Daru giving some food supplies to Muhammad to convince him to go to the nomads instead of surrendering himself to the Tinguit authorities. Muhammad requests Daru a favor if he can call him by the name before they part ways, and he nods and agrees. And finally, Muhammad calls him Daru for the last time. Daru leaves while Muhammad stands at the post, still deciding where to go for his future. Daru looks back to observe where Muhammad will go. He smiles as Muhammad chooses to go to the path towards the nomads and returns home to Algeria. Several days after, Daru returns to his school at the hill of Algeria, and he fixes the damages from the previous attack of the authorities. He glimpses one last time at the beautiful sunset from afar. Students arrive one by one, and he announces that it will be his last day teaching them and will leave soon. He expresses his feelings about his pride and where they are right now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.